Hello, everybody. I'm Rusty Peace. This is Rail Splitters on the Mic, and I'm speaking today with Lincoln Memorial University softball coach Richie Richardson. Coach, welcome. Thank you. Pleasure as always. 12 and 5 start. Uh, it's been kind of a frustrating week over the last few days because you went through a period where you, you, you lost a doubleheader to Anderson, a conference opponent. Uh, you lost a doubleheader to North Georgia, won the third game of that series, 1-0, and then you had a couple of uh, postponements due to rain, but you bounced back this past week with a, a big win over King on the road. Yeah, it was a tough week for us. We, um, uh, you know, didn't play as well as we would have liked over at Anderson, and it's always tough to win in, in the sack, especially on the road. Uh, if you look at the, uh, oh gosh, the first uh, couple of games that everybody played in the South Atlantic Conference, uh, it looks like everybody who went on the road uh, got swept that first, uh, uh, that first conference day. So uh, <clears throat> we fell into that same predicament. Uh, but you realize it's, it, just how difficult it is and you better, better be ready to play. And then, of course, uh, the weekend at North Georgia, uh, a lot of teams go to the University of North Georgia and come back, uh, you know, not uh, with, with results that, uh, that don't suit them uh, just because they are very, very tough down at their place. And uh, we were fortunate to get out of there with a win at, uh, on the last day. Uh, Emma Frost pitched a gem of a game and we got uh, one of three from them. But uh, surprising that we are still in the national rankings. I really felt like after the week that we had uh, that we probably would drop all the way out. But uh, we find ourselves at 13 this week again. So uh, happy to be where we are. We're still young. We're still learning and uh, getting better and improving. And uh, hopefully that's reflected in our play this week. Let's let's talk about that very occurrence of uh, getting. You know, you're already in the national poll. You say you're 13th now, but you were inside the top 10. Two of those losses were to a top-ranked opponent. Two of them to a conference opponent that's very good. One that competes for a, a conference title every year. To my knowledge, and you and I have been around this game uh, here at Lincoln Memorial since pretty much its infant stages. First time Lady Rail Splitters have ever been ranked top ten. Yeah, I, I think so. Um, you know, gosh, uh, to, to get inside the top ten, you look at the programs around you in the top ten, and uh, boy, you see some names that you know are uh, perennial powerhouses. And uh, uh, you know, it's uh, it it takes you back a little bit to to know that uh, people are you know considering you to be in that same company. Um, now, having said that, that's a learning lesson for the program as well. Uh, I'm not so sure that uh, being uh, uh, ranked in the in the top ten nationally didn't have a little bit to do with our play this uh, uh, this this past week. I mean, obviously, we're playing um, from a whole lot different uh, <clears throat> situation this year, where uh, uh, people uh, we do have a target on our back, and we're always getting people's best games, and uh, it's it's not easy. And I think our players are um, got a good lesson in just how difficult it is, especially with a national ranking on your back. Uh, again, that you better be ready to play every time out. So having said all that, when you look at the loss to North Georgia, the two losses to North Georgia, the win, and then the losses to Anderson, maybe in reality the losses weren't that great. Sure, it's going to drop you, but – Perhaps the ranking committee took that into consideration, and that's why they only dropped to 13th. Yeah, I think we have played a very strong schedule when you look at the, those, those teams, uh, along with the people that we played in the early season, Ohio Dominican a couple times, Cedarville a couple times, uh, Maryville. I mean, those are quality opponents. Um, gosh, I'm trying to think, Shorter and um, Columbus State, good programs. Um, so, you know, I think overall our strength of schedule probably did figure into uh, maybe, us, maybe us staying in the rankings. Of course, for us, it's not really about the ranking. Uh, you know, we, we, we understand we're competing against ourselves every time out. And, you know, to add one more thing that we're competing against is really not something we want. It's, uh, um, you know, I made the comment to the team um, once over at North Georgia this weekend. It's, it's hard to beat your opponent when you're so busy beating yourself. And uh, the last thing you want is a national ranking in there to sort of muddy the waters even 
uh, even more. So, uh, you know, for us, it's about just concentrating on what we do, focusing on what we do, taking care of our process, knowing that that probably gives us a good shot at victory when it's all said and done. So you're 17 games in. You've had several postponed that will hopefully be rescheduled at a later date. Big week ahead, and we'll talk about that in just a minute. Is this team, from a performance standpoint, where you hope they would be right now? Um, <clears throat> at times, uh, all facets of, of the game have been good. We have pitched uh, really, really well at times. Um, you know, I, I would say that uh, this past week wasn't our best uh, on the mound. Our offense has, has been pretty consistent. We've been able to score runs. Uh, defensively, we, uh, uh, you know, have been pretty, uh, pretty good overall, but, uh, um, you know, I've made some critical errors in spots. Uh, yeah, I think considering our schedule, um, uh, yeah, I think we've, I'm, I'm happy with this team right now. Again, we're, uh, uh, you know, we're young and, and learning. We're, we're playing with a lot of young kids and, um, I think these are, you know, these are important lessons to learn, and it's a good time to learn them. Uh, you know, I think having um, uh, where we are now, we, we certainly are in a good, good position down the road uh, to compete at a little higher level. When you first came back to your alma mater to take over the helm, or the reins, if you will, of this program, we talked about some of your habits and tendencies as head coach, and uh, the way you recruit players and so forth. I suspect that probably you are very similar to that when you're uh, bringing in a GA or when you brought Travis in as a, an assistant. If you will, for just a minute, speak about both of those two. Let's start with Kylie and uh, her addition to the program and what she brings to the table. Yeah. Well, I, <clears throat> I believe in surrounding yourself with good people. And, uh, you know, we've got wonderful kids in the program and, uh, believe that uh, you you need fine assistant coaches, and we've got those. But yeah, they're people first. They're just good people. Um, and uh, Kylie was a former player of mine at Purdue University Northwest. She was outstanding there. She was a junior college All American at Kankakee Community College. Um, she was the uh, GLIAC Player of the Year up there at uh, Purdue Northwest. Uh, and so my experience with Kylie uh, coaching her was that she was a a, a great kid. Uh, certainly a, a great athlete. Um, she had spent a year at Wheeling Jesuit as a graduate assistant coach, and we were fortunate enough to bring her here. But uh, she's got a strong work ethic that you need in that position, and just a pleasure to be around. I know that our, our kids really appreciate her, and uh, you know, in the office here, besides uh, you know a lot of hard work, we we have a good time together. Of course, Coach Hill is somebody that you were well acquainted with before you came here, and. Uh, the girls seem to love him. He seems to be made, tailor-made for the job in that regard. And uh, he's that kind of coach that, that I always looked at that you would kind of run out in front of a truck for. Yeah. Yeah, Travis, um, uh, initially, uh, I knew Travis from uh, Olivet Nazarene University. Travis's wife, Ashley, played for me there. And uh, he interviewed for an assistant job when I was, uh, again, at Purdue University Northwest. Uh, myself and the athletic director out of the candidates that we interviewed just, uh, you know, uh, really felt like he was he was the best. And um, so we hired him there and it's man, it's it's been a ride with uh, Travis and uh, same thing. He's good people. He's so much fun to be around, even when things are, uh, you know, when I want to choke people, he makes me laugh. And that's an important uh, that's an important quality to have. But you're right, our players love being around him. I love being around him. Again, we have a lot of fun together, and it, it just makes uh, you know, a good atmosphere for everybody to function, uh, to function in. All right, let's get back to the subject at hand. You've got a big week ahead. You uh, resume conference play this weekend tentatively, uh, weather permitting, <coughs> let's say it like that, Mars Hill. Uh, that's going to be, well, as we had it on the 7th, uh, the 9th North Greenville on the road also. Then uh, – the next week, or next weekend, if you will, Saturday the 14th, Catawba, that's going to be here in Harrogate. So it's a big week ahead. Yeah, it is. Again, we go over to Mars Hill, and, uh, and we just talked about how difficult it is to win on the road. They're not off to a great start, uh, but you can throw that record right out the window when you go over there and play. 
And yeah, we just know that they will be um, anxious to play well, put it all together against a team like us. So um, certainly not looking past them. We know that it'll be a great challenge. And then North Greenville was off to a great start. Uh, I know at one point they were nine and one, looked like they might break into the national rankings. Uh, they've been a good program over the past five, six years, uh, won a lot of ball games. And uh, again, going over there will be a, a big challenge for us too.